dear uh, brothers and sisters uh, in Christ, uh, we thank our Lord for giving uh, yet another opportunity to discuss uh, about his wonderful words of life. So, uh, dear brethren, till now we have studied uh, many of the important topics in the Bible, like how to study the Bible and how Jesus is the world saviour, about three worlds and three ways. So today we are going to see one more important topic, uh, you see, <clears throat> that is given in the Bible. So we all know that God created a man in his own image and in his likeness and gave him the dominion of the entire earth. So Adam was created to be the king of the earth. So can somebody read Genesis 126? Yes, yes. Andrew. Genesis 1.26 And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. Thank you, brother. So here we see that uh, God, uh, you see, created man and gave him the dominion over the entire earth, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle of the field and everything, you see, God had created. Adam was made as the king of that one. Therefore, we see the brethren, so Adam was the first king of the earth and uh, he was the emperor and uh, his kingdom was the entire earth. Therefore, we also see in Psalms 8 chapter that God had crowned him, you see, with uh, uh, glory and honor and given him the dominion of the entire earth. You see, therefore, Adam and Eve were the king and queen of this earth and his kingdom, you see, was uh, there in Garden of Eden. So God had established his kingdom first in the Garden of Eden. But uh, we see that, uh, and we all know very well that you see, uh, Adam uh, lost that uh, kingship because uh, he was told to not to eat the forbidden fruit. But once uh, when uh, Adam ate the forbidden fruit, you see, what happened was that uh, the sin entered into the world and uh, death uh, through sin also entered into the world. So since then, Adam, instead of being the king of the earth, he became slave, he became servant. You see, he lost the kingship. Instead of being the king, he became servant to various things, even sinful activities, you see. And uh, he became servant to each other. So there we see that Adam lost his kingship. <laughs> Therefore, we see that uh, the kingdom of God, which God had established in Israel, that ceased to be, you see, uh, in Garden of Eden. Since then, the first human pair were cast out of Garden of Eden and they had to suffer and uh, work uh, hard uh, to earn their uh, daily food. Uh, hence, the curse uh, was given, you see, by God saying, uh, that cursed is the ground by thy sake. Uh, in sweat of thy bro, they shall earn thy bread. And he shall bring the thorns and thistles. You see, that is given to us in Genesis uh, 3 17. So there we see, dear brethren, the kingdom of God, you see, ceased there. It, it ceased to exist on earth. But after, uh, you see, the creation of Adam, nearly 2000 years later, God had typically established a kingdom in Israel. We all know very well that God had given so many kings to Israel. And the kings, you see, who reigned over Israel, the Bible says that they sat on the throne of Almighty God and ruled. Let us read 1 Chronicles 29-23. 1 Chronicles 29-23. Emmanuel Buddha, can you read? 
Okay, First Chronicle 29-26. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David, his father, and prospered. Very and good. all Israel obeyed him. Very good, Buddha. So, here uh, you see that uh, Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord instead of David, you see, his father. That means Solomon did not sit on the you see, throne of his father. It says he sat on the throne of God. That means God was actually ruling in Israel through these kings. Hence, we see that God's typical kingdom was again you see, established in Israel. You see, through the kings of Israel. Therefore, we all know that there were 21 kings in the tribe of Judah. And they ruled over Israel. And God commanded to the last king of Israel, Zedekiah, saying, Take off thy crown, remove the royal diadem. It shall not be the same until he comes whose right it is to rule in the kingdom. Let us read Ezekiel 21st chapter 25 to 27. Stephen, mother, can you read Ezekiel 21st chapter 25 to 27? And thou, profane wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come when iniquity shall have an end, thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is and abase him that is high. I'm sorry, exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. Very good, brother. So it says, though wicked uh, king of Israel, uh, remove the diadem, take off the crown. You see, the diadem and the crown is actually a symbol of kingdom and rulership. Uh, you see, a symbol of kingship. That kingship of God was actually there in Israel. But when the last king ruled, God told, remove that one. You see? And he shall overturn the kingdom that is established in Israel. And how it shall be? It shall be no more the same. It shall change. It shall be different, it seems. Until who until he comes, whose right it is, and I will give it to him. So who is this one? We all know very well. This is none other than the King of King, our Lord Jesus Christ. Until Jesus Christ comes, you see, the kingdom shall not be established in Israel. When Jesus comes, that kingdom shall be given to Jesus. Himself. This is not speaking about the first advent. This is speaking about the second advent of Christ. We know very well when Jesus came at the first event, he was not the king. He did not rule as a king. Therefore, dear brethren, so after the destruction of Israel, there were so many emperors and empires and the kingdoms who came and ruled in this world. The Assyrian, the Nineveh, the kingdom of Egypt. You see, various kingdoms. But none of this kingdom is the kingdom of God. But all these things, all these kingdoms are the kingdom of the devil under the supervision of, uh, we see, the Satan himself. Uh, dear brethren, today's headlines, what do we see in the paper and the news is that uh, very shortly, there is going to be a possible of a third world war. The whole world is eagerly watching. Uh, dear brethren, so you see, today's headlines is given in the Bible, you see, nearly more than 4,000 years before. Where is it given? If you see, it is given to us in the dream which King Nebuchadnezzar, the emperor of Babylon, saw. See, when king was sleeping and was much worried of what is going to happen, after him, who is going to come and rule in his kingdom, you see, he saw a dream. And this dream is given to us in Daniel 2nd chapter. So, after the class, I request everybody to please go through then in second chapter and see whatever we are saying, is it from the Bible or not? Anyway, you see in uh, 
king uh, saw the dream and he was much troubled so early in the morning he woke up uh, and uh, he wanted to know the meaning of the dream but unfortunately he had forgotten the dream so hence uh, he called all the wise men you see all the scholars all the astronomers uh, all the educated people in babylon and he told Look, i saw a dream in the night vision and because of which uh, i was troubled so please uh, kindly explain me the dream then as soon as the uh, king uh, said this one all the wise men said oh king no need to worry don't worry at all so you please tell us what is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof but the king said i have forgotten the dream so anybody who is telling they have to tell the dream as well as the interpretation thereof then i will come to know what you are saying is truth or not and as soon as the king said like this one all the wise men said oh this king this is not possible at all because there is not a king in this world who has ever asked such a question and there is no man on this earth who can answer such a question of the king and uh, uh, nebuchadnezzar the emperor of the whole world he got so angry that immediately he told you call yourself a wise man you can't tell me what's my dream and interpretation immediately take all these people and uh, you see and uh, behead them so based on this uh, commandment of uh, what uh, the king had given you see the ariok the you see the army uh, chief you see uh, he took this commandment and he began to gather all the wise men you see all the scholars you see all the astronomers astrologers everybody to behead them and similarly he also came to pick up you see daniel and his friends also dear brethren so that is the time that uh, daniel put the question to the uh, area saying why sir what has happened that uh, why such a degree is given by our uh, emperor nebuchadnezzar then area tells completely what all happened then daniel requests the king give us one day time we will tell the dream and also the interpretation please give us one day time then through area they get the permission and uh, that night uh, they daniel and his fellow you see uh, uh, everybody they prayed to the lord and you know and that day god showed to the daniel what exactly the king had dreamed and as soon as uh, you see daniel awake uh, early in the morning so happy that he stood before the king and said oh king you see we are ready to tell the dream and the interpretation thereof o king dot the king of kings and dot you see ha huh, very wise and uh, when uh, thou was sleeping being much worried what is going to happen in the future about babylon and about this world empire who is going to come and rule god through this dream has revealed unto you what is going to happen in the future so as uh, you saw o king you saw a multi metallic uh, human structure which was uh, a very uh, differently made because the head of it was made of gold and uh, the shoulders and the uh, hands uh, were made of uh, silver the belly and the thighs were made of brass and uh, the legs uh, was uh, made out of uh, iron but uh, the speciality of the feet was that it was mixed with uh, clay it was a mixture of iron with clay and as you were seeing and appreciating uh, this uh, multi metallic uh, human structure a stone cut out of uh, a nearby mountain untouched with uh, human hands came and smote uh, you see the feet uh, of the uh, structure and began to pound it uh, it began to pound it in such a way that uh, 
it became as a chaff of the threshing floor and the great wind came and blew everything away in such a way that there was no clue of the structure at all and the stone which the sawst which came and pound the image it began to grow and it began to grow and became a big mountain it covered the entire earth dear brethren when daniel exactly interpreted what the king saw in the dream the king was so happy because you see he had forgotten the dream he told the dream exactly as uh, he saw and uh, by this uh, nebuchadnezzar clearly came to know that uh, surely daniel will definitely tell the interpretation in a very apt and correct way so what does daniel say let us read daniel second chapter 37 and 38 brother can somebody read daniel second chapter 37 and 38 okay i'll read daniel 37 38 okay mm. thou o king art a king of kings for the king of heaven has given thee a kingdom power and strength and glory and wheresoever the, the children of man dwell the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand and hath made them these ruler over them all the what this king of this head of gold mm mm see it clearly says though a king a king of kings the god of heaven has given the kingdom power and strength he has made the ruler over of all the beast and fowl of the air dear brethren thou art the head of gold see this is the same words which actually God had told to Adam, isn't it? You see, to rule over the beast of the field and a fowl of the air and a fishes of the sea. The same thing that is mentioned in Genesis one twenty six, same thing mentioned in Psalms eight chapter four and five is again repeated in Daniel. The same kingship was given to Nebuchadnezzar, and after this, what will happen? It seems, you see, verse thirty nine and forty, verse thirty nine and forty. Shankar brother, can you read verse thirty nine and forty? Vivek Shankar brother, I'll read. Ah, okay, Abhishek brother. brother, please kindly read thirty nine and forty. And after you shall uh, after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear. rule over all the earth and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron break in pieces and subdued all things and as iron has break all these shall it break in pieces and bruise bruise very good so here it says after thee shall rise another kingdom which shall be inferior to thee that shall be a kingdom of uh, like silver you see it shall uh, rule over all the earth and after that one there shall come a third kingdom like a uh, brass uh, it shall be much more inferior uh, but the fourth kingdom will be like a uh, iron uh, it shall be inferior to all but it will break all the other kingdom and rule by itself uh, okay now verse 41 to 43 verse 41 to 43 uh Shaijo brother, you are there. Can you read in English, brother? Is it okay? Okay. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read forty-one to forty-three? Okay, Daniel two forty-one to forty-three. And whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes, part of the potter's clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron for for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay 
And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be part, partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with the mighty clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Thank you, brother. So here it says, the fourth kingdom shall be a mixture of kingdoms. That means a clay shall mix with iron. That will be the fourth kingdom. We all know very well, dear brethren, that a clay doesn't mix with iron. As uh, the clay is uh, wet, till then it will be, you see, uh, attached to the iron. But once uh, it gets dried up, you see, it gets detached. That's what, uh, you see, it says the fourth kingdom shall be a diverse of all. It shall be a mixture of kingdoms, dear brethren. You see, as iron cannot mix with clay, hence these kingdoms cannot mix with either of uh, each other. Then, you see, dear brethren, you see, the next uh, verse 44, it says, as uh, you saw a stone coming and hitting the image, it means what? Let us read this important verse, verse 44. Uh, Shaiji, brother, can you read verse 44, brother? Yes, brother. Thank you. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end. But it will, it will itself endure forever. Thank you, brother. So, it says... The stone coming and eating the image. What does Daniel say? In the days of these kings, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom on this earth which shall destroy all the other kingdoms. But this shall not be left for other people to rule. But it shall consume all the kingdoms. It shall stand forever and ever. Dear brethren, as soon as the interpretation was told, the king became so happy that immediately he fell prostrate before uh, Daniel and worshipped him and said, uh, yeah, Daniel's God is a real true God. And he was given a lot of gifts, uh, dear brethren. So, dear brethren, hear what uh, Daniel said about the four universal empire is uh, not a small empire. Sir. We know that uh, in the history of the world, we can trace out uh, these four universal empires. The Bible, you see, they, we are given a clue. We will see that one. The first empire was Babylon, which ruled from 606 BC to 538 BC. And the second universal empire, which conquered Babylon, was Medo-Persians, who ruled from 538 BC to 331 BC. Daniel ruled, uh, Daniel lived actually in both, uh, you see, uh, kingdoms. And the third kingdom which ruled after Medo-Persia was the Grecian Empire. That is from 331 BC to 160 BC. And the fourth empire that ruled was Rome from 160 BC to 470 AD. Dear brethren, you see, here if you see, the Bible gives us a clue. Which is that first uh, you see, empire? So by this uh, we can come to know that our interpretation is correctly matching with the history of the world. Let us read Daniel 2.38. Uh, Shaiji brother, can you read Daniel 2.38? Yes, brother. In your hands, he has placed all mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds in the sky. Wherever they live, he has made you ruler over them all. You are that head of God. You are that head of God. That means the first kingdom is the Babylonian kingdom. You are that head of gold. Dear brethren, therefore, you see, the head of gold is Babylon empire. That's the first empire that ruled. And the next empire that ruled was Medo-Persians. You see, the shoulders, uh, the hands uh, with the silver. You know, how many shoulders are there? Two shoulders. Uh. So two shoulders, two hands joined together means two kingdoms joining together. See, for the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. The first class we have studied, hope you all remember how to study the Bible. For each every word, the meaning from the Bible has to be taken. You see, each and every words from the Bible, for all these things, the meaning has to be traced only from the Bible. For the Bible, Bible is its own dictionary. So what do you mean by shoulders? 
we know the very wonderful verse Isaiah 9 6 which says about Jesus the sure the kingdom shall be upon his shoulders the kingdom shall be upon his shoulders means the responsibility of the government hence two shoulders means two governments ruling together medians medians and persians they join together and ruled over this world that is the you see silver portion of the image then the belly and the thigh of brass that is the grecian empire we all know very well who was the king of greece the first king of greece was alexander great who conquered the whole world in just a few years dear brethren at the age of 22 he was a world emperor at the age of 32 he conquered even the world and even you see he left this world in death at a very short span of life. He conquered the whole world. And the fourth empire that ruled after Greece was the Roman Empire, who ruled for the maximum number of years. Dear brethren, if you see the value of metals are getting, uh, you see, decreased. The value is getting uh, decreased. But... The strength is increasing. What is the meaning of this one? This means uh, the value of human lives uh, as the kings uh, ruled one after the other became so low that there was no value for humans at all. They were treated like slaves. Slave trade also began. But uh, similarly, their strength, uh, their ruling, uh, you see, became more ferocious. Uh, you see, they did not care for anybody. This is what uh, it, uh, you see, symbolizes uh, the brain. And Daniel says uh, in uh, about the feet uh, mixed with clay, we already read that verse. Uh, it says uh, that, uh, you see, the kings uh, shall mix uh, with the seed of men. And what is this clay that mixed with iron? Iron, we all know, that represents the Roman Empire. Now, which is this clay? What is this clay? See, this is the clay. How is the clay to look it at? It just looks like a stone. You see? Just looks like a stone. Below is the stone. Above is the clay. So, clay is almost like a stone. But, uh, you see, it's not a real stone. You see? Once, uh, if it comes in contact with the water, it becomes, you see, like a clay. Clay characters are uh, clearly seen in that term. Okay? But once if it's dry, it seems to be like a stone, but uh, it's not a stone. So what does the clay represent in the Bible? For that one, we need to first search what does the stone mean in the Bible? What is the meaning of stone in the Bible? The stone in the Bible means true church. Let us read 1 Peter 2.5. 1 Peter 2.5. Uh, Binod brother, can you read 1 Peter 2.5? Binod brother? Okay, I Okay, okay, sir. I will read First Peter to uh, First Peter two five. Mm. Uh, yeah, also as uh, lively stones are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Amen. So you are also a spiritual, uh, yeah, living stones uh, built up uh, for a spiritual house. Uh, you are living stones. We are building a spiritual house. So stone means church always in the Bible. So what does the clay represents? The false uh, uh, into, you know, what do you say? imitation of stone represents. That represents the false church. We all know very well not the entire church in the world is the true church. You see, not all the churches in the world are accepted by God. You see, one who follows the Bible, they are called the true church. Isn't it? So, which is the church that got mixed with the Roman Empire. You see, the iron legs, iron feet represents Rome. So what is the clay? You see, the clay is the false church. You know, dear brethren, which is the church got mixed with the Roman Empire? You know, we all know very well, you see, that is the Roman Catholics. Okay? The word Catholics actually is a Latin word. That means universal for the entire world, there was only one church, a universal church, that was the Catholic Church. This Catholic Church got mixed with the Roman Empire and began to rule. Hence, it was called as Roman Catholic. Like, for example, see, if the Catholics in Rome are called Roman Catholics, that's good. But how come the Catholics in India are called Roman Catholics? They should be called Indian Catholics, no? 
But why they call the still as Roman Catholics? Uh, this is how the name came because the Roman Empire got mixed with the Catholic Church. So here when we say the Catholic Church, kindly don't misunderstand. We are not speaking about individuals. We are speaking about the system, never about the individuals because there are a lot of godly children, God's children, God's people in, you see, that system. Hence, therefore, dear brethren, this uh, mixture of iron and the clay represents the Catholic system. Even today, that system is there. How? That is represented by the ten fingers of the toe in the ten European nations, dear brethren. But the, in Daniel, we saw that a stone, you see, came untouched uh, with human hands, uh, began to pound the uh, image, uh, you see, and totally, you see, smashed it. Uh. So what does this represent? Uh? This represents the church being developed from the kingdoms of this world, from the mountains, untouched with human hands, not with human power, but with the spirit of God. The church is being developed in this world. So once the church is complete, it will come with Christ's second advent and smite the empires of this world and completely destroy it and make it powerless. Today, we are living in such a time, dear brethren. We can beautifully see before our eyes that all the worldly kingdoms have been founded. A beautiful example of this is, you see, USSR. United Soviet Social Republic. Where is it today? You can't trace it in the world map at all because USSR was dissolved into Russia and various other fragments. They have the, it's being pounded every day. You see, the pounding is happening. All the powerful nations in this world are getting weaker and weaker. They have the, and you can see in the coming days, even America will be keep, become powerless. They will be stagnant. You see, there will be deficit of uh, funds to help somebody. That condition will shortly come. Therefore, see what does the Bible say? Psalm 110, verse 5 and 6. Raj brother, can you read Psalm 110, verse 5 and 6? Raj brother, you're there? Brother, sorry, I'm the outside brother, and even I don't have Bible in my hand. Okay. okay, no problem, brother. Thank you. Stephen brother, can you read? Psalm 110, 5 and 6. Yes, Psalm 110, 5 and 6. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. Very good, brother. So, here it says, the Lord at the right hand shall strike through kings. You see? So, Jesus, what he will do with him, sir? He will strike through kings at uh, his, uh, you see, uh, coming, uh, therefore, we can see, you see, it says, he shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. Uh, wound the head of many countries. Wound the head means what? Who is our head? Uh, Prime Minister, President, head now. So these are being pounded every day, day of Dren. And after this one, what happened? Uh, the stone that pound the image began to grow into a beautiful and a mountain which covered the entire earth. Now, what does this represent? Uh, Daniel says that uh, this is the kingdom which shall be established shortly on earth. Read Daniel 2.45. Uh, Abhishek Buddha, can you read Daniel 2.45? Okay, I will read. Two forty-five. Hmm. For as much as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that is break in pieces the iron, the brass, and the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God had made known to the king that what shall come to pass year after and the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. You see, so this is the kingdom 
the fifth universal empire that is going to be established on earth we shall destroy all the kingdom and stand forever so the four universal empires babylon medo persia greece and rome were on earth so similarly this fifth universal empire shall be on earth okay now this is daniel second chapter the same vision was shown again to daniel in a different angle in daniel seven chapter so let us read daniel seven chapter 2 and 3 daniel seven chapter verse 2 and 3 uh emmanuel brother can you read daniel 7 2 and 3 Daniel chapter 7 to 3 Daniel spake and said I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea and four great beasts came up from the sea diverse one from another you see so as Daniel saw a vision in the night the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea and uh, because of which four uh, you see beast came out it seems now was a beast uh, read Later on, after the class, please read Daniel seven chapter. Now let us see how the beast was. Daniel seven four, the first beast. Shaiji brother, can you read Daniel seven four? Yes, brother. The first was like a lion, and it had the wings of an eagle. I watched until its wings were torn off, and it was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a human being, and the mind of a human was given to it. You see, the first beast was like a lion having the eagle swing. It seems okay. What about the second beast? It's given in verse five. But I read five also. And there, and there before me was a second beast. Me was a second beast which looked like a bear. It was raised up on one of its sides, and it had three reeds in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, "Get up and eat your fill of flesh." Thank you, Buddha. So the second beast was like a bear. Its shoulder, you see, was raised up. It seems, other was down. It seems, it had three ribs in his mouth, and it was told to eat much flesh. It seems, this is the second beast. Now, what about the third beast? Read verse six, Buddha. Huh? After that, I looked and. There before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard, and on its back it had four wings like those of a bird. This beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. Very good, brother. So the fourth beast, the fourth beast was like a leopard having wings of a fowl. That four heads it seems dominion was given to it. Okay. Now, what about the fourth beast? The fourth beast was different from all the beasts. How was it? Read verse seven and eight. Uh, read with her. After that, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled under foot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. Mm. While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully. Ah, uh, see, it says this beast was different from all the three beasts. Why? This had ten horns on his head. You see, the other beast did not have any horns. What happened? As Daniel was seeing, a small horn came in between. Because of which, three other horns were plucked by the roots. It seems. Then what was the speciality of this little horn? It had eyes like a man and mouth speaking great and pompous words. So we will see what is the mean of this one, dear brethren. The same thing that is mentioned in Daniel second chapter is again repeated here in the form of a, you see, four wild beast. Why? Why these two things are given? One is from the sight of God, 
all these four universal empires uh, which ruled in this world spoiled so much uh, families, uh, made so many children as orphans, uh, killed uh, so many people, uh, dominated uh, and ruled ferociously in the sight of God. They are like a ferocious, cruel breast. Uh, you see, but the same, uh, you see, Kingdoms, uh, in the sight of man, it is excellent. Uh, today, the historians, when they see and read the books, uh, they magnify each and every emperor's name, saying, oh, such and such king ruled very greatly. They speak very high of these kings. Uh, the same kings in the sight of God are beasty. Hence, these two visions in a parallel way is given to you. Brethren. So, both are one and the same. Here, it says that, uh, you see, the head of gold, you see, that one we saw, it was Babylon Empire. Here it is given by Levan. You know, tell me, what is the meaning of lion? What does lion represent? You would have learnt in the school. Lion is what? Lion. What does it do in the jungle? What is it? The king of the beast. The king of the beast. King of the jungle. Uh -huh. You are all forgetting your school days. Huh? So, lion is the King of the jungle, so the first universal emperor to be the king of this whole world was Nebuchadnezzar. Next, uh, we see you see the shoulders uh, and hands of silver. That represents the Medo-Persian Empire. That is represented by the bear. Why bear? You see, one shoulder was up, one shoulder was down. What does it mean? That means one kingdom is strong, one kingdom is weak. The Medians uh, and the Persians ruled together. The, the Persians were more powerful than the Medians. All this is given in the Bible only. I am telling you each and everything. I will show you everything. Scriptures from the Bible itself. And why it is represented by a bear? Because it is not so easy to escape from the attack of a bear. Because if a bear comes and attacks, if you climb the tree, it will come there. If you go and swim in the water, it will come there also. You run to the mountain, it will come there. You, wherever you go, it will come. The only way to escape from the bear is that lie dead. You should be breathless. That is the way, you see, the media Persians ruled. Once they decided to conquer, they would never leave until you surrender. This is all there in the Bible, dear brethren. Each and everything, what I am telling, the verses are there in the Bible. And the third empire, is represented by the, you see, the belly and the thigh of brass. That was the Grecian Empire. Now, who was the Emperor of Greece? We saw now, who was the Emperor of Greece? Alexander. Very good. Alexander the Great. You see, he conquered the whole world in just a span of 22 years. You see, the fastest land-moving animal. Which is it? The leopard. You know, leopard is the fastest land-moving animal on earth. And uh, cheetah, if the cheetah is given uh, uh, wings, what does it mean? Super fast. First of all, it's fast. Wings of a fall means super fast. Alexander Great was super fast. He conquered the whole world. At the age of 32, he departed from the world itself. What does the four heads represent? Sir? Alexander Great had four generals for his army. You see, this is all again given in Daniel 11 chapter, 8 chapter also. God willing, we will see in the coming days. Anyway, the fourth emperor, fourth empire is the Roman Empire that is represented by the ferocious beast. You see, dear brethren, so here we saw that uh, uh, iron was mixed with the clay, but here that is clearly shown in, uh, you see, the ten horns, uh, the uh, feet had ten fingers. No? But here it's clearly given that head had ten horns. Now, what is the meaning of horn? Ten horns. Read Daniel 7.24. Daniel, Daniel 7.24. Uh, Binod brother, can you read Daniel 7.24? Okay, sir. I will read. And the ten horns out of the kingdom, ten kings, shall rise and another shall rise after them and it shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue 
three kings. Very good, brother. See, clearly given the ten announcements is what? Ten kings. That's why we told the ten fingers represents ten kingdoms which are still there. It says a little horn came, a king came. Because of whom the three horns, the three kings were uprooted. You see, what is this one? This uh, little horn is the papacy system. You see, the papacy system which ruled on this world. You see, because of which the three empires were uprooted, giving way for the papacy to rule. Now, these three empires are Heroli, Eastern Exarchate, and Ostrogoths that were completely uprooted, giving way for the papacy to rule. Now, what did the little horn do with the mouth and with the eyes of a man? Let us see. Daniel 7, 8. Daniel 7, 8. Uh, Sahiji brother, can you read Daniel 7, 8? Yes, brother. While I was thinking about the whole there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being, and a mouth that spoke boastfully. See, the mouth that spoke boastfully, great things. Uh, uh, you see, the interpretation is given by Daniel in Daniel 7.25, brother. Read Daniel 7.25, brother. From the Bible. 7.25? Yeah. Yes, sir. He will speak against the most high and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hand for a time. Time and half a time. You see, by the mouth, by the eyes, what did it do? It shall speak pompous words against the Most High, against God, they will speak against Him. Sir. They will think to change the laws and times. Dear brethren, you see, so many things which are not in the scriptures, they changed. Like, for example, confession. You see, huh? do all sorts of sins and go and confess to the Father. All your sins will be forgiven. Where is it given in the Bible that all your sins should be confessed to human beings? You see, dear brethren, this was against the scriptures and they sold, you see, they sold actually indulgences. That means each and every sin, you see, there was a ticket given for each and every sin. For the dead souls which are in hell, the ticket was given in earth so the souls from hell would be transferred to heaven. Now, where is it given in the Bible that you can transfer the souls from hell to heaven if you buy the ticket in earth? Because of these indulgences only, today Vatican City is built. And even today the Pope claims that uh, he has the keys of heaven and hell. Whoever he wants, he can send to hell. Whoever he wants, he can send to heaven. And the rosary, keep on repeating the same thing. You see, where does the Bible say? Jesus said, use not vain reputations like the Gentiles. Huh? And the Bible during those days was kept in Latin language. You know what is Latin language? Today, if I speak in Sanskrit, can somebody understand? No, it's a dead language. Similarly, during the Dark Ages, the Bible was totally hidden in a Latin language. Anybody touched the Bible and used the Bible, they were burnt at stake along with the same Bible, the dear brethren. Well, Pope used to claim that in his left hand, there was curses. If he shakes his hand like this, everybody will die on the spot and go to hell. And in his right hand, there was a lot of blessings. You see, because the people living then was orthodox, they did not have knowledge. They used to believe them blindly. But all these things ended. You know when? When Napoleon Bonaparte arrested Pope Pius VI and transferred him from jail to jail, everybody clearly know that uh, Pope did not have this power, whatever he claimed. He handcuffed Pope in front of everybody and uh, you see, to shred it back uh, and he was made to go around the entire France from jail to jail. Ultimately, Pope died in the jail only. Then people realized what all Pope claimed in his left hand, right hand, it was totally false. So there what happened? The complete power went on. Today also we can see that the ten nons are there represented in European nations. So what happened to the beast? You see, there we saw a stone came and hit here you see, and destroyed this empire. 
But here in Daniel 7 chapter, it's clearly given in verse 11 and verse 26. Uh, Abhishek Buddha, can you read verse 11 and verse 26? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll read. Uh, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. He says, because of the great words it spoke, it was destroyed. Now, what is the meaning of it? Continue, verse 26. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. Uh, putting into fire means what? Not literal fire uh, where it will be burnt. Uh, it means complete destruction. The complete destruction of that system. The beast is not literal. So similarly, the Roman Catholic system we are saying, not individuals. Uh, that system will be totally destroyed, dear brethren. In Daniel 2nd chapter, we saw that a stone began to grow into a big mountain and covered the earth. We saw that was the fifth universal empire that was going to be established on earth. In Daniel 7 chapter, that is more clearly given. Read Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Uh, Steve, one brother, can you read Daniel 7, 13 and 14? I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion, an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, which shall not be destroyed. He very clearly is given the one like unto the Son of Man, Jesus approaching, you see, and to him, what was given? Kingdom was given. That the all people, nations and language should serve him. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. We shall never be destroyed. You see, so Jesus' kingdom is shortly going to come on this earth. We establish on earth. Now, is it Jesus only is going to rule? No. Read verse 27 also, brother. Okay, I'll read. Uh, read and it, the it. kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. You see, it shall not only be given only to Jesus, but it shall be given to, you see, who? The people of the saints of the Most High. It shall be given even to the church. The church along with Jesus, are going to rule on this earth. This is the fifth universal empire. See, Daniel 2nd chapter, it is given in Daniel 7 chapter, it is more clearly given. All the people, all the nations will serve our Lord Jesus Christ, dear brethren. So, Daniel 2nd chapter and 7th chapter are parallel chapters, dear brethren. So, shortly, the fifth universal empire that is going to be established is going to be our Lord Jesus Christ's kingdom. Read Emmanuel Buddha. Please read Matthew 6, chapter 9 and 10. The Lord's Prayer. Matthew 6, 9 and 10. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Okay. What did Jesus tell us to pray? Thy kingdom come. Where? On earth, thy will be done on where? On earth, even as it is done in heaven, dear brethren. God's kingdom is done in heaven. Now, is it done on earth now? No. Jesus taught us to pray this basic thing. Thy kingdom come. That is the fifth universal empire, dear brethren. Very shortly, this is going to happen. You know, Jesus preached to each and every city, this kingdom only. Read, brother. Luke 4.43. Binor brother, can you read Luke 4.43? Okay, sir. So, uh, Luke 4.43. And he said unto them, I must praise the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. See, Amen. 
Uh, I may preach the kingdom of God to other cities. Mm -hmm. Preach what? Kingdom of God. For therefore am I sent. Jesus came to this earth to proclaim the gospel of this kingdom. Dear brethren, are we listening to the same? Dear brethren, this is the secret of God's kingdom that is going to be established on this earth. Kindly listen to the YouTube link which I am going to share with all of you. And if you have any questions, any doubts, you can please ask.